This is one of the quicker lessons. It's on divisibility. Uh, it seems real innocent, but it's going to get more and more complicated as the chapter progresses. Uh, if you take a number like 12 and you divide it by 3, we say that 12 is divisible by 3. But the way you would write it is as far as the notation for proofs and all that here is you're going to write it as 12 or as 3 divides 12. Okay? 3 divides 12 is the way that we're going to write it. Um, does 5 divide 12? No, so we'd say a little slasher. I'm using exact answers there. So um, all of these mean the same thing. D divides N. D is a divisor of N. D is a factor of N. D is a multiple of N. Just remember that all of those ways can be used to describe that. And then we get to properties. Now, all of these properties are interesting, and I'm going to stop the video, and I'm going to stop the class. I want you to turn to a partner and describe what's happening in each of these properties. So, for the divisibility properties, are there any of these that you don't understand or don't make any sense? They all make sense. Like this one here. Like this one here. D divides N, then AD divides AN. So, if 3 divides 12, then 6 should divide 24. That makes sense. Okay, And all of them are kind of that way. Uh, Let's see how you would actually prove that, and uh, this you'll love these proofs. Most of these are direct or contradiction proofs. Uh, proved by transitivity, if D divides N and N divides M, then D divides M. For example, if 2 divides 4 and 4 divides, um, oh, let's say 16, does 2 divide 16? Sure it does. So we're going to prove that. Now, whenever you're looking at a proof here, you're, you're going to go back to the definition of divisibility, and they have it right here. So I'm going to come back to this one, and it says that if you say uh, D divides N, for all K element of Z, the bigger number, I call it the big, is going to be the divisor, the smaller one, times a constant k. Small times k equals large. Okay. So let's go to this one, and let's see what this is saying. Prove the intransitivity if d divides n and n divides m. So we're going to say d and n are not 0, because we don't want any of those to divide by 0. If D divides N, then all you have to do is rewrite that as N, the big, equals K1 times D, the small. Write that in. Do you have the little blocked out? Good. Let's go ahead and put that in. N is equal to K1D. And, of course, we have to say K1 is an element of Z. So what do you think happens when we say N divides M? Same thing. M is equal to K2 times M, where K2 is an element of Z. So now, what if we say then D divides M, then M here is going to be equal to, it's K2 times N, but N was also equal to K1 times D. So what that, what we would do is we would put this in here, and we would say M is equal to K2 times N, or K2 times K1D. Because we already have K2 times N, now we're just putting that N, K1D, and now we have K1, K2 times D. You need to state that K1 times K2 is an element of Z, which it would be if K1 and K2 both are, are integers, the product's going to be an integer. Property of multiplication. But K1, K2 is an element of Z. So then you can say the last part, which is D divides M. Okay, one more time. So beautiful little uh, proof. You, what do you start with? Okay, D divides N. 
and n divides n, where d and n are not equal to zero, then you can state d divides n, write it as an equation. Equation. And then n, the big, divides, or the, the n, the little, divides the big m. So you keep thinking of which is the larger one as second. m is equal to k2 times n. And then do the algebra. Uh, this was a weird little proof, but I think it's worth saying. Prove that n divides 1, then n can only be plus or minus 1. So what they did is they said, okay, n divides 1, there exists a k such that 1 is equal to kn. So notice that I'm always writing that into an equation. Little 1 equals k times n. Or, excuse me. 1 is the big is equal to k times the little. And in this case, kn equals 1. What's, what are the only possibilities? The only possibilities is that you either have k equal to 1 or k equal to negative 1. And then n would be 1 or negative 1. So th since these are the only possibilities, then n is equal to plus or minus 1. How are we doing? Doing okay? All right. You try this one. Yeah. So we're given A divide B and A divide C given where what? A, B, C are what? Yeah, so they're integers, aren't they? And we're going to say, because of, we're saying A divides B, B over A, C over A, we better make sure that A is not equal to what? Zero. Zero, yeah, and they gave it, that to us. So then, whenever you see A divides B, then what you can do is you can say that's the same as, which is bigger, A or B? B is the big, this is the little. So then you can say B is equal to A K1, where K1 is an element of the integers. And then for the other, we have A divide C. That's going to be uh, C is the big one, A times K2, where K2 is the element of Z, the integers. So now what are we going to do? Well, we're trying to prove that A divides B plus or minus C. So let's say that we just take B plus or minus C what will that be equal to? AK1 plus or minus AK2. And then what can I factor out? A. A, so you'll have K1 plus or minus K2. And we can write where K1 plus or minus K2 must be elements of what? Positive integers or integers in general. Yeah. And that's because if K1 was an integer, K2 is an integer, you can't assume it. You have to write it. Stop. That's the one error that people will make is they'll, they'll do this algebra beautifully, and then they get to this point and they go, you know, they'll leave this out. Don't forget to, to include that. So now if B plus or minus C is equal to A times K1 plus K2, that means which is the smaller of these two? A, A or B plus or minus C? A. This is small and this is large. So then we can finally say that A divides B plus or minus C. Therefore. And you got it. All right. Questions? So you're going to, for the assignment, start with number one, great, perfect one to start with, uh, three, five, 
five is a little different. You don't have to do the whole proof thing, but there's some proving involved. And then number seven. And I think that's it. So uh, real short assignment. I would like to see you get one done before you go today.